Hi there, and welcome to some more Swords and Sandals uh, action here at Almost Solitaire. We're gonna play another Ancients game, Command and Colors Ancients. And uh, this time is uh, the Battle of uh, Skirtaia, or Skirtaia, um, fought in 103 BC. That will be our focus point. So, this, this battle took place... You know, the, during the same time as we had the uh, Kimbri invasion up in north. So, I mean, the Romans had really... Uh, they had problems on different fronts here, right? So, for instance, uh, you know, they had the, had these battles over at the east. They had been battling in uh, Numidia. Now they had the problems with... Uh, the Germanic tribes and Gauls up north, right, with a Cimbrian um, assault there or invasion. But that's not all. They also had problems with uh, slave revolts, um, and this is one of them. One of pretty big one actually uh, that took place in Sicily, um, and I mean this is kind of connected actually to the. Uh, Kimbrian invasion in a way because if you remember the last battle we played uh, it was Arosio uh, the Romans had a you know they lost so many men here it's incredible um, so I mean it said that I think you we said last time that was something about 80,000 men left so they had problem with getting manpower f to raising new armies basically and now they of course need these these manpower not only from Rome but from their Italian allies, right? So now the Italian allies were uh, they were not too keen to uh, give that manpower, and but they could do that if um, if if the Romans could agree with um, not having Italians as slaves, well. Because up to this time, they could be slaves from the from their Italian, you know, from people hailing from their Italian allies. So this was one demand from the allied countries or states, or what you would call them, tribes, cities, uh, or regions. Uh, anyway, okay, we can give you more manpower if you promise to not use Italians as slaves anymore. Um, Rome agreed to that. They needed this uh, manpower, and they were, in, you know, in midst of reorganizing their army anyway, which we will see, I think, already in the next battle. And we'll see more of that. But Rome agreed to that, and that, of course, uh, meant slaves in uh, Sicily as well, because there were Italians there. So. The governor uh, in Sicily, uh, Publius Licinius Nerva, he went through with, uh, um, you know, starting to interview the, the slaves, basically, trying to figure out from where they did hail. I mean, maybe they should be, you know, not kept as slaves anymore, depending on, on their origin, basically. So he started that, and many slaves were freed. Uh, but this caused another problem, because there were big landowners in Sicily that needed these uh, slaves for their labor. Uh, so they started to protest against the governor, and this became pretty serious. So Nerva suddenly you know, stopped this... Uh, um, freeing of uh, Italian slaves. And that, of course, caused trouble among the slaves because they um, they were having, you know, high hopes to, to be given freedom now. So when this suddenly was, was called back, they started to rebel. And this was a rebellion that took place in, all, in many places in, in, in Sicily at this time. And there's two... I mean, leaders mentioned here. So one is Athenion. I think he was more to the east, if I'm 
remember correct what I read. And then we have Salvius, um, who was more to the west, I believe. Uh, I think he's actually was located in Lilubayum from the beginning. Anyway, these started to revolt. They armed themselves. They made some battles with uh, um, Nerva. I think at least Salvius did. And he was successful. So more and more slaves uh, joined this group. Uh, I know this text says something about... I mean, when these guys com combined... I mean, of course, there were two great leaders here. And there could be rivalry between them because Salvius also started to call himself the king of Sicily. So, but Athenian, he said, okay, I will, I will be your general. I will be your subordinate, right? So Salvius was the big leader here. Athenian was his second, you could say, I believe. And their combined numbers is said to be 2, oh, 20,000 foot and 2,000 horse. Um, there is um, a mention about the double of this strength. Um, who, wa who was that who wrote about? I don't remember right now, but I could look it up if you want to. But, um, you know, like 40,000 foot or something like that. Or at least in total 40,000 foot and horse. I don't know really. Uh, but they joined armies and they became a big threat. Now, we have a man called Lucullus. I think we have the whole name here. Hey, here we have him. Uh, Lucullus, uh, no, at least he was a praetor. Uh, and Lucullus, he, well, he was kind of uh, um, familiar with the slave revolts here because on the mainland Italy, there was another slave revolt happening, but for a different reason. Uh, there was a Roman young noble there called Vettius, and he uh, fell in love with a, with a beautiful slave woman that he wanted to be his wife, I believe. Uh, so he managed to, you know, get her freed by her, uh, her owner uh, for a I think a pretty pretty expensive price. So Vettius didn't really have the money to pay that uh, eventually, and he, I think he was taking loans, and then he couldn't couldn't pay those, you know. So he had a problem there uh, because they were now demanding him to pay back for what they have uh, loaned, right? So. Uh, or Lent, I think it's said in English. Uh, anyway, um, the problem was he didn't have the money, of course. So what happened then was that he kind of uh, went crazy. He killed the owner of the, the slave, his slave uh, woman. He also killed some of the guys who he owned money. So he was pretty much a... a criminal there, of course, and now Lucullus, Praetor Lucullus was sent to quell this rebellion because what he did, I mean, uh, what Vettius did was to gather up a slave army. He armed the slaves around him and he, he got uh, a few thousand numbers, I believe, and took a defensive position over there in Campania and he was actually also, like uh, actually Salvius, he um, called himself, uh, I mean, Salvius called himself the king of Sicily, and Vettius called himself uh, the king of Campania. Now, Lucullus was sent there, and he managed to quell that revolt uh, successfully. So the Vettian revolt was uh, brought down, and he was very successful in that. That's why the Senate sent him to deal with uh, the the rebellion in, in um, uh, Sicily as well, because Nerva couldn't really do it. Uh, I mean, the, the the governor there. So Salvius, oh sorry, uh, Lucullus went down to Sicily. He had some reinforcements with him to 
boost the army that were already present there. I think it was said that he had, had something about 14,000 men uh, in his army when he, he joined them. Um, and he went after Salvius. Now Salvius was a bit afraid of uh, what was coming. Uh, so he he um, he basically uh, went to a, a city called Triagala, where he could, you know, withstand the siege from the Romans. Now that was Salvius' plan. Uh, by the, by the way, but the, by this time he called himself Salvius Trifon, um, and but Athenion, who was a bit more aggressive, I believe, he managed to convince Salvius that this was not a good plan just to sit in a defensive position in a city and get uh, besieged. Uh, so he thought that we could meet, meet the Roman army in open battle. Uh, probably he knew about the numbers here. He knew that they were a bigger army than the Romans. Of course, the Romans were more disciplined than battle-hardened. So um, there was a quality difference here, but still... Salvius uh, agreed. So he was camping close to, um, I think it's a village called Skirtea, and the Romans approached, and they there was a lot of skirmishing happening here before the real battle, as very often happens in the ancient battles, and then the then the both our armies arrayed for for the main battle here. And it is said that the armies closed in to each other. Athenion had pretty much cavalry here on, on his side, and he charged with his cavalry and was very successful, managed to inflict great losses on the Romans, and the Romans started actually to to be pushed back and retreating here. All looked good for the for the slave army here. But suddenly Athenion was uh, uh, injured and uh, fell off his horse. And everybody thought that he died because he was, I think he was in the midst of, of the Roman troops here. So he had to play dead here, right? Or they would just kill him. So he was, you know, what everybody thought, dead. And... When the slave army saw that he, their great leader was, or the great general, was uh, slain, what they thought, they started to panic. And this single event did uh, spell the doom for the slave army here. They, they started to panic, retreat, and, and, and uh, get off the field, leaving it for Ro the Romans who won. Uh, the Romans under Lucullus didn't really... Uh, Pursue them in the, but in every every prisoner they got, they just you know put to death here, right away. So it didn't take any prisoners. Now, so Salvius, he survived the battle. He was retreating with his army. When the night came, Athenion managed to flee. Uh, so he went on. After the, the retreating army gathered up with it, so they went back to uh, Teocala, which was the the city where Salgus had wanted to, you know, bunker up in the in the from the beginning. So there was a siege happening anyway, and at that some point, Salgus was actually uh, killed. He he died. So Athenion became the the big leader of the slave revolt here. Lucullus, uh, you know, started to organize the, the siege of the city and just waiting out uh, Athenian and his uh, slaves. Anyway, what happened then was that Lucullus got information that he was to be replaced uh, for some reason. I don't know why they were unhappy with him, but he was to be replaced and he was really mad about that so he destroyed all his uh siege equipment and and you know destroyed whatever uh you know i don't i don't know how they approached uh, the city if it was a, a ramp or some 
trenches or whatever, but he destroyed everything and went off so that his successor would not get any benefits of that. Um, so, yeah, that was the story of Lucullus, and I think this war ended in 100 BC, eventually, with the slaves being quelled. The Romans had to, in the end, send us... Um, uh, you know, a, a bigger army uh, to to quell the the revolt in the end. Um, actually, under a consul, so real serious business. Okay, but that's the the story about this battle anyway. So let's look at the war council. Uh, yeah, here it says. Uh, Okay, the rebellion continued in 100 BC. Okay, anyway, slave army uh, leader Salvius, uh, Trifon, and they got four command cards. They will move first. We have the Roman ar army under Lucullus with six command cards. We will fight your six banners. There are no special rules, but we have these pre-Marian organized organization of the Roman army. So I will using I will be using the the gray uh, blocks for this battle. Uh, so that's it. So six banners and two more cards for the Romans, which is reflected for with the A and D slots here. Um, so the armies then and tactics. Well, let's go through the, the, the slave army first. So we have uh, uh, Athenion up here and then we have two medium heavy cavalry with him. That's all the cavalry those guys have. Then we have the main infantry battle line here. In basically one big line, we have two warrior units in, uh, in the rear here. But we have auxilia, warriors, auxilia, warriors, warriors, and here's uh, the big leader himself. Then we have auxilia, another warrior, and two more auxilia. So no light infantry. So basically, no, sorry, here we have medium heavy. Uh, did I say warriors? I'm not sure, but actually we have two medium heavy infantry, regular infantry units here, but we still have four units of warriors in this army. And yeah, let's look at the Romans as well before we just mention something about tactics. So pretty standard setup here. Velites up front, three of them. We have cavalry on the flanks. Note we have no cavalry over there on the slave army. Uh, in the center we have Four units of uh, medium heavy legionaries. We have allies on the flanks, two auxiliaries, and then back here together with Lucullus. These guys are, by the way, unnamed leaders. I don't know the names of those. And then three medium heavy infantry together with Lucullus. So pretty even army in numbers. I think the Romans have one more uh, unit. So pretty even. Uh, the Romans start on their baseline with the slaves a bit in the board, so they have, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, more retreat paths there, or retreat hexes. Anyway, tactics. So, like I usually want to do, I, I want to try to do some historical, at least the opening stages, right? But here's what I'm thinking. Uh, Looking at the composition here on their slave army, I would like to get these two warriors up to the front line. You know, maybe exchange places with uh, uh, some auxilia here, who could just be in the back line here, giving the support. So if, if I can do that organization, you know, swap those guys so we can get all the warriors in the front line. And then if we could get something that orders a lot of troops here, preferably uh, line commands, we can get up here and then we could actually charge even better if we could get the double time because then the warriors could charge three hexes and clash with the main roman line that's what i'm gonna try to do at the same time try to do some i don't know hit and run but at least hit tactics with those guys the cavalry here attacking some weaker guys trying to get them unsupported and then kill off the roman cavalry as well uh, so Athenion will for sure be aggressive if I get the cards for it. Uh, so that's the main plan for the slave army. I think that's 
probably something what they did. From what I read, there's not that much details about this battle what I know of, so... Mm. Anyway, for the Romans then, well, I don't I don't want to be lingering here at the base uh, edge here, baseline edge, so I want to move in and try to prevent basically the slave army from executing their plan of organization things here and then charging. So I will try to get forward as soon as possible before they manage to get their warriors up in the line and engage them somewhere in the middle of the of the battle board. Uh, of course, I will try to move up my skirmishers as well, maybe in the beginning stages if possible, and try to get a hit or two on their warriors, you know. As I said previously, they are pretty important to get one block off those guys because they become much weaker as soon as they take one hit. That's the plans. So by that, let's begin the battle. And did I say the slave army goes first? Yes, I did. So uh, let's check the AM. Okay, here's exactly what I needed. So if I can do the organization thing, then move up maybe one hex. I don't, maybe I don't really even need that because with the double time, the warriors could one, two, three, they could reach the main line here. And then we have two units left. So if I just could get, you know, a line command or something, and then do the double time, we are already seeing some action. But I need to roll for what these guys could play. So it's an A, B or C. So we've got one more card to reveal here. That's a mounted charge. Another thing that really supports my plan, right? I want to be aggressive with uh, Athenium, but I don't know if I want to be that just yet. You know what? I will start the organization thing with two units left. That should be over there. And this is perfect because now I can just sweep these two units. Um, we'll swap these two units and get these warriors up front. This is good for the double time. I could really maybe do it already because now I have one, two, three warriors. Ah, it would be nice to get that last one as well before we do the charge because the double time can order. Ah, okay, these guys need to be in a group. I see, I see. Well, 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 okay. I couldn't just pick which I want there. Well, let's see what happens. Romans go next. Ah, let's check their cards in A or B first. Four unit center, three unit center, that will be important in the upcoming battle. And heavy troops, they don't have any heavy troops. So, hmm, not a super good card in this scenario. And that's the tactics card or lowest order count. And the lowest order count would be the heavy troops. So I need to play that. And that means I can order one into my choice, and I will go with that plan, you know, with starting with harassing their their warriors. I think I'll go with the Velites up on the flank here, so they're gonna move towards the center and throw the javelins against that warrior unit there. One die. Looking for a blue. No, nope, it was a red. Okay, replace the card, then we go to the slave army again. I like what they have in their hand. Okay, this is this is trouble because now I need to play one of these cards. Hmm. I need to play a tactic card or lowest order count. I don't have any section cards here. Um, okay. Mounted charge or double time? Okay, let's do it. Let's let's send off send off Athenian. Since he apparently wants to go there, uh, I can reach him with two units. One, two. I, I mean, I can reach the Romans with two units. Uh, so. I'm gonna attack first with these guys. Three dice from the beginning, but one more because I have the mounted charge. These guys cannot evade. They can ignore one flag though. Let's see what we get. What a bad roll. 
three reds and a flag which that unit ignores, so they're gonna battle back. But they didn't hit either, but really bad, because I was hoping to, you know, get a hit or two here so I can finish a job here and then continue over here, but that would probably not happen. But let's see if Athenian is better in fighting for dice as well. Well, at least we got, let's see, that's two hits. Then we have two flags, that's good. First of all, we bring those as casualties. And then one flag they can ignore, the second flag they cannot, and they need to go two hexes, so we lose two blocks. And we actually have the first Roman block off here. So Athenian is repeating history here. We got the first banner, let's put it there. Now, Athenian could go in, he could go one more, but I think I'll stay here and then I attack the Roman cavalry. It's still four dice, because I think this is for the whole turn. I think so. Let's continue with that. Four dice, and the Roman cavalry is not supported anymore. Okay, can you believe it? Four hits. Roman cavalry goes down, bang, got another slave victory banner. I can once more go in if I want to, but I think I'm happy staying here. I kind of block the Romans from getting behind my back here. Well, despite the first charge went bad, we are really happy. We have destroyed two Roman units already. Um, thanks to Athenian's charge. But, um, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, that's good. That was good. Really nice opening there. And kind of repeating history. I like this. Okay, Romans, what can you do? C or lowest order count. So let's see what we have in C. Otherwise, it needs to be three in the center. We have light troops. Light troops, I think I'll go with that actually. I'll play the light troops. And that's actually up to six of them. One, two, three. Too bad we lost one Velite. Uh, do we want to engage with those guys anywhere? I don't think so. I'm happy with these three, I believe. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually move out these guys as well. I think those warriors are my main focus point to get some hits on. But we have a uh, attack to do here. These guys will evade, they don't want to fight with an auxilia adjacent to a leader here, so... Athenian evades, but he'll roll three dice. No hits, he got away. Let's go there. Okay, then we have some... Um, Missile fire to do. Let's start here with a one die attack against that warrior. That's a flag. The warrior, of course, ignores that. Second attack with two dice. It's a Velite who already moved up the last turn, but he didn't hit anything either. So this is not going too well for the Romans, to be honest. They don't hit anything right now. Okay, it's the slave army again. Maybe Athenian can do a Second charge now. A, B, or C. That's a double time. Then we have a coordinated attack, and then we have a medium troops. All right. Medium troops could actually... No, they only go two hexes, but I think that's a perfect card for this situation, because I can also activate the cavalry. Too bad we only have four cards, so... Yeah. But let's do it. So I'm gonna start moving forward. 
some medium troops here. Uh, oh, it sucks, it's only four units. It's so many I wanted to move now. What should I do with the cavalry if I think about that first? Uh, we could attack the auxilia here. With two attacks, we could probably get it. Yeah, let's do that. One, two. Then we take, let's see. I will actually move up these two guys as well. Because I'm going to attack those pesky veli taste there. And here, these guys go one hex, these guys go three, uh, three hexes. And let's start with a cavalry attack. And I will start with the guy who don't who failed last time they will get the chance to regain their honor now so they're gonna attack here i also want to do that first because if these guys retreat i want to be able to attack the second time so three dice and i have leader support so do the auxilia by the way and they are supported but these cavalry's elite this is three hits thanks to athenian so these auxilia will for sure be dead uh, but they will battle back first, and they hit with two, hmm. and then they also got the flag here. So let's see, two blocks dead. The first slave casualties, and then we're gonna retreat three hexes. One, two, three. I'm glad to do that. The cavalry is spent, but they have done a good job. Then comes Athenian himself, attacking here. Three dice, one hit required. And they got it thanks to the leader symbol, actually. So these guys go down and we got the third banner for the rebels. Hmm. And I will go down here. And now I have no problems with staying here because they cannot get behind me all the way. Uh, they have no... I mean, we have eliminated their right flank or left flank, more or less. But I will dare to attack here because those guys are all supported. So also flags are hit. I cannot kill them, but we can for sure bring some casualties on those legionaries. Uh, that's two hits. Good. It might be that we... In the, if the Romans succeed with their role, we can die here. But I think that's a good exchange. Let's see, they got one hit, thanks to the leader adjacent, and then the flag. Let's take the hit first, then we're gonna roll for Athenian. We're gonna remember we have one flag here. Athenian is fine, but I will take the flag for sure. One, two, three. Pretty nice. Pretty nice second wave of cavalry coming here. Uh, I mean... What happened with his flank, right? They are just gone. And this is not all. We're gonna attack with the warriors as well. So the Velites will of course evade, but we we'll roll the four dice, looking for greens. Got one hit. Romans are suffering. Then these guys evade. They go down here. Then we have the second attack. Um, and those guys will also evade. But four dice will be rolled. No hits though. These guys saw what was happening, so they managed to get away before before the warriors' javelins were coming. Okay. Now it's time for the Romans again, then. Hmm. It's looking a bit tough for them right now, actually. C, D, or E. A lot of cards needed to be revealed here now. Two on the left. Well, we have one unit on the left. Left, left. And then we have an outflanked. We have a rally. We have a rally. Then we have an order mounted. We have one cavalry unit left. Well, is the rally something we could do now? We could rally back some legionaries that could be needed here and we could get back that velite as well maybe i play it right now i think i could do that actually so i'm gonna roll six dice i will play the rally better be safe than sorry because 
these guys could attack again. So we got a lot of greens and two leader symbols. And the leader symbols was what? Uh, each unit type or leader symbol role. Okay, so leader could be anything, I believe, right? Why the appropriate type or in or adjacent to leader sex is rallied? I think leader symbols means pretty much anything. So I could get back two blocks of legionaries here thanks to the leaders, and I get back one Velite here. These guys are, by the way, um, Activated. Mm, bothers me a bit. It doesn't mention what to do with the leader symbols here, but I'm sure it could be anything. Yeah. Let's play it like that. I hope I didn't play this wrongly, but these guys will now march up. They don't want to be here on the baseline. These guys will go up, try to harass once more, and one die attack. Let's take those guys as the target. Nothing. In the latest games I have played, I had the feeling that the Velites have been pretty effective actually, but not now. Not now. Okay. Slave army. C, D, or E. Coordinated attack. We have one of those cards already. We have a light troops. And a move, fire, move. Okay, we could have some skirmishing happening here now. Um, light troops or move, fire, move. I don't really have anyone who could get into the line here, but I will play the... Uh, we also could do the coordinated attack, we could do another attack here... Nah, I think I go with the light troops then, for this time. So I'm gonna order a few of them actually. Mm. Yeah, let's take those guys. I think I'll leave those and instead take these two forward. So, these guys basically just moves up one hex. These guys moves up two hexes. They cannot battle then. And these guys move one hex to join the line there. So the line is, well, it's not a nice line anymore, but they are moving forward and their left flank is advancing in a haste here. No battle this turn. A bit of a lull here. Then we see if the Romans can do anything. C, D or E. Two left, outflanked, heavies or, or the mounted. Could attack with the cavalry against those auxiliaries who attacked. The outflank could do the same thing, actually. I think the outflank could be something. Also, we have the heavy troops, which is a bit of a dummy. Uh, we don't like that. Would be nice to get that off of the hand before it's this big thing starts. But I have. There are some things need to be done here. So I'm gonna actually play the outflank this time. So these guys, these guys, and uh, these guys. So these legions will break the formation and attack Athenian. The cavalry will attack. And these guys will throw their javelins. So Let's start here. They attack Athenian's cavalry, trying to... They rallied some troops that went off, scared. 
by the cavalry charges here, but now is time to repay. So, four dice, the cavalry tried to evade. But they didn't. The legionaries caught them actually. They were too certain of their victory, so they caught them, so the Romans get their first victory banner. Hmm. And we need to check what happens with Athenian. Maybe he's need to do his faint death again, as in history. Actually, he do. Oh, I love this. This is happening just like in history. He's he falls, but he's not dead. Anyway, the Romans think he is, so they get a morale boost of that, meaning one victory banner. I will not follow. Wow, that was cool. So it's three to two right now. Then we have the Velite attack. Let's start with that before doing the cavalry attack. So two dice against that Auxilia. And there's a hit. We are seeing the Romans, you know, they were a bit shocked in the, of, of the beginning here with the cavalry charges and all that. So, but now they are slowly gathering up the forces and start to make war for real. So, but we have the cavalry attack to do. Three dice. It's Auxilia, so they cannot evade. Uh, but that's a total miss. The Auxilia will retaliate. And they hit with one. Ouch. Okay. We place the card there. And I think I'll leave the first session here then. Uh, we have the slave army in lead, three to two. It's pretty even. Still, there's um, no decisive things happening really right now. I mean, most of the units are in good shape here that are left on the board. We have the cavalry who has taken some losses, but still, uh, I mean, those could withdraw if enemy comes near. Well, here we have uh, the Romans are in a bit of trouble there, maybe. Uh, so. And we have some nice cards coming in, right? The double time and stuff. So we might see uh, a big clash pretty soon, actually. Um, and of course, a big other event here is that Athenian has uh, been a casualty here. Uh, probably, you know, injured as in, in history. So... That's all for part one, and um, I hope you will back for part two. This is exciting, and uh, see you again. Bye for now.